Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start pre-processing the Elephant Trunk Nebula, which I did over two nights, 26th and 27th of August, and we captured 60 light frames on the 26th. And let's have a look. On the 27th, we captured 46. So it's 106 three minute images. So it's about four, four and a half hours of, of imaging on this particular nebula. So as you can see, we've got, we had the lights and we had the flats. Now, because they're done on two separate nights and I've removed the camera between nights, what the first thing we'll have to do is actually process the flats. So we start off like this on the, the first day's um, data. We go to image calibration, add files. The files we're going to add are from the first night, which are in my APT folder. Camera one, trunk 26, flats, not lights. There's all the flat images that I took. So we need to add all those into the image calibration here. So we control A, click open. That adds all those files into the image calibration output directory. We create a new folder called cal. It's like that. Master bias. We add in our master bias, which is living in here. Master dark, we don't have a master dark, we don't do those. And we obviously, we don't have a master flat yet because we haven't created it. So let's click that apply global button there. And that will then go and process and calibrate all those flats with the bias file. Should take about, uh, about a minute. Right, so that's finished processing that first set of files. What we need to do now, we need to integrate the calibrated files to create our master flat for day one. So we go to processes, image integration, add the files that we've just created from the, actually while we're here, no. Right, we'll add the files that we've created from that cal folder that we created in the flat folder, just there. So we add all those in. Okay. We don't need to add anything else here at this point. Combination is average. Normalization is no normalization. Weights, we don't care for weights. For the flat. Pixel rejection, we'll use percentile clipping and for normalization, equalize fluxes. And we can untick that clip flow range, we don't need that for flat. And then we click that round button there, and that will now create our master flat image, which will take couple of minutes so I'll uh, switch the mic off while it's doing that so anyway I'm pro what I'm doing is I'm processing um, nebula called the elephant trunk nebula and I haven't looked at this data yet so I've got no idea what it's going to look like um, now this sort of stuff can go on forever because there's so much to process um, and where I'm starting here is I'm doing flats
Well, I've got two days worth of data here <coughs> that I have to process. Um, and you start off by doing the flats for each day. So that's a flat file there. I guess it doesn't look, it's nothing. I mean, it's just that. It's done with a flat panel, a flat light panel on the end of the telescope at the end of the night. Um, and what it does is it removes um, dust marks from your images when you process the, the actual um, images of what you photographed, you know, up in the sky. It actually processes, it actually removes those dust marks and other things. So you have to do flats. There isn't really <laughs> any substitute for not doing them. Anyway, so I just saved that, that flat file there. And we'll save it into here. Save it in a flat folder there. And we call it Master Flat, strangely enough. So that's that master flat created. Now I have to repeat process for the second day, um, which is done by all processes, image calibration, clear that lot out of there, add the files from the 27th. So that's the flat files, that's what they look like straight off the camera. And we Untick master dark, untick master flat, and in master bias, I go and find my master bias file, which is there. Output. Will be 27th. Flat and cow. Then we just hit that button there to process them. Yeah, um, if you've got the time, um, it's it can be quite easy to to get into. You can you can do it with a standard just a standard DSLR camera. You don't have to have a telescope. Um, if you use a, a DSLR camera on some sort of mount and you've got reasonably dark skies, then you can photograph the sky. You just have to collect enough light. That's the key. It's like um, the lens of, of your camera or the telescope just acts as like a light collection bucket feeding it onto the, the camera sensor. So you have long exposures. Um, if you're not guiding a, a, a mount, then you can probably get away with 10, 15 second exposures before, you know, the, obviously the earth is spinning. So you get movement on the stars. So you have to have guiding to guide your mount if you're going to do long exposures. These exposures of these light images here were three minute exposures. So they, the, the actual um, telescope was guiding while it was, uh, while it was photographing the sky. So, you, but, so, but you can do it with just a normal, uh, normal camera if you want to. You just got to keep it still. Well, you know, you never know. Give it a try. Um, it's the, the the camera I use is actually a Canon 450D, um, which is an old camera. It's it's actually modified inside the cameras. There's um, an infrared filter. There's actually a filter inside which blocks most of the redness that you get from space. So the cameras that I have actually have that filter removed. They've been stripped and. The, the filter removed and you know put back together um, which I do myself but you don't actually have to do that because unless you're photographing nebulas uh, especially the Orion Nebula which is I don't know what part of the world you're in but that pops up around November in, Euro in Europe for us um, you don't really need to remove you know you don't need to take your camera apart just try it you know support your camera somehow and do some long exposures and see what comes out. You don't have to go you know, spending thousands and thousands on, on equipment, extreme equipment, and you can process using Photoshop. Although I don't use Photoshop, 
I use this software here, which is like 300 euros. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool once you get into it. Anyway, that's calibrated those, those images. What I need to do now for the day two images is uh, integrate them all together to create a second master flat file. So again, we go to image integration. I'm going to clear all that lot out, add the files from the second day. From that cal folder. So select them all, click open. And then image integration. What do we have? Average, normalization, no normalization, noise evaluation, don't care. And then under pixel rejection, percentile and equalize fluxes and untick that. And that will, when we do that, create a second master flat. But yeah, the, um, a lot of people use what, what you'll find if you live in a really dark place or you can get to a really dark place. If you use, if I don't know if, you, if you're in Europe, if you're in the northern or southern hemisphere, but if you use just a, um, a DSLR camera and a lens, you can photograph Milky Way. You, the, you know, you'll get pictures of the Milky Way because strangely enough, when you have a um, just a camera or a very small telescope attached to a camera, what happens is when you look pointed up at the sky, you're seeing a wide field. Okay, when you have a, a large telescope and you point it up at the sky, it actually gets in tighter to the sky. So you can, I, with my setup, I can't actually photograph the Milky Way because, I mean, some of the objects I photograph, I have to do over two or three nights. I have no other way of doing it. So I have to take a, a load of photographs over two or three nights processing repeat it but on a different area of that particular location and then I have to stitch them together uh, it's called doing a mosaic they so stitch them together to make a, um, a big picture because I don't have a wide field set up I only have a, a narrow field set up but which obviously gets in closer to the objects I want to see this is um, <clears throat> one of the questions that when people say a lot to you know on the forums or whatever what telescope do i buy well <laughs> you can have actually three or four depending upon what you what what you want to photograph what filters do i want to buy it depends on what you're photographing but to start off yeah just use a camera it's really cool really really good fun doing that and a lot of people do it so we've got a second master flat file here that one there that's just uh, stretch it this what i've just done here is stretch the image just to have a look at it you can see there's nothing there uh, but you can see i don't know if you can see it on the actual stream um possibly not just there there is a dust mark which this will get rid of but i'm not sure you can see it on the stream so we'll save that as our second master flat, which will go in seven flats. Let's call it master flat. Like that. Oh, you could see it, could you? I couldn't, I couldn't actually, I didn't know if you could see it on, on here. Yeah, that's cool if you can see it. It looks like it's uh, all I can see. Strangely enough, all I can see on my preview window here in the stream software is an image with squares on it. It's really strange, isn't it? But uh, yeah, that dust mark that you could see, that will be present on all the images that I took. Um, if I can show you, hold on. Yeah, if I bring this screen over here. All the images that I took, all these light images, these are the actual photographs of that part of the sky. 
but that dust mark will be present on every one of these. So using that flat file there enables us that the software will actually use that flat file and remove that mark from those images when it processes. It doesn't, if you do it like this, it doesn't, but if you do it without you doing flat files, then you will see them. You'll see them round out of focus, like donuts. They look like donuts on your screen. And the only way to get rid of them, unless you're really good in Photoshop, um, is to do the flat files at the start, and then the flat files actually remove them when you do the processing. I'm, I've never seen one on my, on my images yet. Uh, well, I did, tell a lie, when I first started. <laughs> and I wasn't doing flats because I was too lazy. And, you know, I'd just done four hours imaging and I was keen to get the image out there. Then you see these marks. You go, oh, maybe that's why we do flats. But, uh, <clears throat> so that's that second, that's the flat file generate for the second day. It's, it's cool. It's no problem. It's what I'm here for. Um, but that's how we go. And the way you can create flats, you can actually probably do this with a with a DSLR on a on a lens as well. And this is really simple. As I said, I use a light panel, an LED light panel, and I've got it with the telescope I use is an eight inch reflector. So at the end of the night, when I finished imaging, what I do is I go out there and I turn the telescope horizontal uh, vertical, and I just lay the light panel on the top, and I take fifty photographs. That's how I do it. But what you can do also do, and you can probably do it with a with a DSLR and a lens, you get a white t-shirt, clean white t-shirt, and you stretch that over the lens or the telescope, hold it around with an elastic band, and then point it up at the sky, the in the daytime, a nice blue sky, and take say twenty or thirty images. Um, but you'll need to figure out how to get the right exposure before you do that. Otherwise, it'll just be too bright. I think it's, it's called ADU, and you have to do it at a half ADU. You need to look that up. I'm not technically enough to explain it exactly what all that means. You can do it with just a white T-shirt. That's what a lot of people do with telescopes. But what that means is if you use, because you can't touch the camera, or the lens because the dust will move um, you have to do it straight off after you've done the imaging session so if you do it with the white t-shirt method it means you've got to stay up all night and leave everything set up for the morning when you get up and do your flats and that's the only problem that's why i use um a white so led panel uh, so i can do it close everything down i have an observatory I don't have to break everything down outside, but I don't leave all the light panels, cameras. I bring them in because of moisture. So that's the, that's how you do flats. 